In the next two videos, I'm going to show you how to find the roots of a complex number. In this first video, we're not actually going to do complex numbers at all. We're going to do purely real and purely imaginary numbers. Even if we're finding the, say, the cubed root of a purely real number like 8, our calculator might tell us the answers too, but there are in fact going to be three answers. Two of those are imaginary. Now, whether these situations are purely real, purely imaginary, or complex, the process is the same. We first write the number in polar form. We then make it general by adding on 2n pi. We then take the required root. We then substitute in consecutive values of n up to the original power. So that means if it was a cubic, we would do 0, 1, and 2. We then, if required, write the answer in rectangular form. If you're lucky, the question will just ask you to write the answer in polar form. So let's factorise a purely imaginary number. So let's go for z cubed equals 27i. Now I've used 27 just to make it a bit easier for me because obviously that is a cubed number. So in polar form, I'm just going to draw here my argand diagram. 27i would be up here, where that length is 27, and that angle in radians is going to be um, pi by 2. So that's going to give me z cubed equals 27 cis pi by 2. But to make it general, we're going to add on 2n pi. And that's because obviously that's pi by 2, but then I could add on another 2n pi, then another 2n pi and so on. I'm actually going to write this as a single fraction. It's often easier to do this. So that's going to be um, pi plus 4n pi all over 2. Makes it a bit easier. So then I'm going to go for my z by taking the cube root of each side. So the cube root of 27 is going to be 3 cis. And now, using De Marva's theorem, that's going to give me pi plus 4n pi. And because we're doing the cube root, we actually just divide by 3 from De Marva's theorem. So that's going to be over 6. So that's actually our general formula, but let's go for z0. That will give us one of our roots. So that's going to give me 3 cis, and then that's going to be pi over 6, because obviously the 4 times 0, 0, 0 times and pi is 0. And then they've got to be consecutive, so that's z1. That's going to be 3 cis. So 4 times 1 is 4, 4 times pi is 4 pi, add a pi, so that's 5 pi over 6, and z2 equals 3 cis, so 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times pi is 8 pi, plus pi, that's 9 pi over 6. Now, that's it finished. In some cases, you might be asked to change those into rectangular form. If you need to, you can see an earlier video on how to do that. For this section, we're going to find the cube root of a purely um, real number. Um, but I'm going to use a variable, and I'm going to make it negative. Now, I'm going to make it negative for a reason. Um, it is the harder case, and it's actually the one you could imagine is there to trick you. Now, the only reason I'm making it Z cubed is to make life easier for me. So I want to write this in polar form. So let's look at our um, di argan diagram. And minus M is going to be, or minus M cubed, is going to be over here. Now, the modulus, the size of this, is M. And the argument is pi. So that means I can write z cubed equals m cis pi plus 2n pi. Now I've got to stress that this is just m. It's not minus m. And that's the mistake people make. And it's the mistake they're trying to catch you out with. 
So I'm now going to do the cubed root of each side. Sorry, that's a mistake already, m cubed. Now I'm going to do the cubed root of each side. So I've got z equals m cis, and then it's going to be pi plus 2n pi all over 3 from De Marvel's theorem. And now I want my three answers. Any three consecutive values will do, but I'm going to go for z0. So that's going to give me m cis pi over 3. Then I'm going to go for z1, which is going to give me m whoops, cis. And that's going to be 3 pi over 3, which is pi. Now that's actually the answer you'd get if you were to just try and find one on your own, because the cis pi just gives you minus 1. Um, so that times m gives you minus m, and that cubed would give you minus m cubed. And that's the one you'd probably get automatically. And then we've got z2 equals m cis. So we've got 2, um, two times m2 two times pi, so that's 4 pi plus pi, that's 5 pi over 3. There's no point in going to z3, because z3 will actually give me the same answer as z0. So if I put 3 in there, it would give me 2 times 3 is 6, times um, pi is 6 pi, plus a pi is 7 pi over 3, which is the same as 2 and a third um, pi. We can take 2 pi away, because they're just that's just a complete turn, which gets us back to pi over 3. So that's our answer, unless they want us to write our answer in rectangular form. And as I said before, if you want to do that, just see one of my previous videos. In the description below, you can find a link to a worksheet that has questions that you can try on your own. I hope you found this video helpful. Stay in infield with Winfield.